I don't understand why all of you are in here so early. Clearly, you're all wanting to know how to be bad guys. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to DerbyCon and my talk. My talk is meant to look like a pirate, uh, and it is essentially uh, putting yourself in, a, in the shoes of the bad guy who does things that we normally defend against, hoping that you will use this technique in your engagements. If anyone does uh, pen work or you're doing assessments and you find a large meter repository, aha! So, let's begin. Standard, well, standard or standard-ish disclaimer. Everything I have to say is me. Uh, pretty much covers that. This is just for educational purposes only. And I am a pre-1986 dude, uh, basically running around on what would become, uh, sorry, Basically running around what would become the, <laughs> what would, uh, everyone else would jump in the pool to, uh, pre before any of the lovely rules came out and put some people that I know away. Uh, researcher, speaker, and Nova Hacker member, Nova Hacker people in the house. Awesome. Great group of dudes. Of course, I'm a professional, so I have those. Hey, people like search. They want fresh breath. <laughs> But the reason why oh my notes are short, uh, hmm. uh the reason why we're here is because we are going to look at the World Wide Web, you know, the twenty four seven open diner store in a way that you usually don't get a chance to look at it. Uh and in doing so, we're gonna look at the components of, of websites versus just looking at the website itself because we're looking for specific types of information. A couple of terms you want to be familiar with. Uh historically. Uh, leeching, for anybody who used to do BBS, you know, kicking leeches off boards, <laughs> um, has now morphed into what is looting and or ninja looting. Getting into an area, basically uh, taking what you want and bailing out of there uh, without someone noticing you. Uh, and people do that on sites all the time. We call it downloading now, uh, but it's still just like leeching something off of a, off of a site. So, how did we get here? Oh, that's a that's a pretty long story, but the the more modern version of it is uh, essentially with the implementation of this. People remember Napster? Like, <laughs> someone is plotting. Uh, it, it just demonstrated that individuals wanted to share the content that they had with each other and also grab stuff for themselves. Uh, and in doing so. When Sean and Sean and the other dude decided, hey, we're going to throw this out there and see what happens, it blew up. And it was well received, right? Everybody remembers when, when music industry found out that people were just passing this stuff around, they were very happy about it and just could not, could not express themselves in a way that didn't require lawyers. So, the funniest part about Napster is that Napster, once it finally was, everything finally got settled, I got bought, uh, it became Rhapsody, became very, very popular as Rhapsody, but not really so popular because the brand name of Napster was greater than what Rhapsody was. So they basically changed that name back because that was the brand. Uh, and yeah, it became the pretty much the model for how file sharing would be conducted. The next iteration of, uh, oh, sorry, because my notes aren't here. I'm kind of playing this a little bit. Um, the Napster interface was very interesting because this kind of became the de facto standard for how uh, that interface would look. Uh, one fun fact, anybody anybody would admit to ever using Napster back in the past? Did anybody notice that the secondary function of it was not just to share music, but if the individual was not careful in how they set that up, you could literally crawl that computer through that Napster browser. I've heard. <laughs> so... Then we moved on to Nutella. Nutella became the new standard. Uh, it was a peer and a peer-to-peer and a peer-to-multi-peer. So you got things a little bit faster than you did with Napster, where you were pulling off of individual clients. You know that guy has it. I'm pulling it sole source from him. Uh, so this was a, a better better item, uh, but it still just showed that hey, people want to share. You, you killed off Napster by making it commercial. 
protocol. Now we have a new protocol, and the protocol was also what most of the uh, interfaces were called. Uh, by the time Nutella uh, was released in June of 2005, and this information is a little dated, uh, that population was about 1.8 million uh, computers across the across the globe, uh, and it accumulated, it acquired, sorry, that's the wrong word. It accounted for 40% <laughs> uh, of the traffic and market share out there, which was crazy. Lots and lots of different interfaces in order to utilize the protocol. Uh, some of these you may see or it may see and know and remember, or it may have seen on a friend's machine. <laughs> Their interface was different from the Napster interface. The Napster interface that Sean and John uh, created, they weren't really good programmers. They kind of threw something together, which also explains why secondary functions were easy to find. Uh, whereas this was put out by individuals who came from anybody? Anybody? It was AOL. <laughs> like, they put that together, got in a lot of trouble for it, but once it was released, it's out. Once that cat's out of the bag, you can't put that cat back in. Uh, so their interface being made by, by mostly programmers looks very convoluted, gave a lot of statistics, gave you the ability to individually pick whether you want audio video or documents or whatever the media type you wanted versus just doing music. Uh, and, you know, there were multiple different types of interfaces, but this was, this is one of the, uh, interfaces that was available. Oh, uh, yeah, speaking of Nutella, anybody remember like LimeWire, Morpheus, BearShare, all the other, uh, means of, of access? <laughs> so, as I stated, uh, that, that cat kind of, he just kind of strolled out of the bag. He wasn't, he wasn't intended to go back, even though people were attempting to put that cat back in the bag through legal means. Now we live in the age of BitTorrent, and BitTorrent is amazingly fast. You can literally pull down 4.7 gig in a matter of minutes on on a regular connection. You don't have to have anything that's like super special. Uh, and it's amazing because it is doing multi-peer in a way that if there are pieces and components of it, of the item you're looking for, it will pull those all at once. And that's great. Um, it, it does account for a massive amount of traffic, uh, 3.3% of worldwide traffic, period, uh, across the internet, across the globe, that's what the torrent was pulling. And this, uh, like I said, this data is a little bit dated because uh, this talk is not, this is not my first time giving this talk. <laughs> they had some simpler interfaces that allowed you to, and if you recognize any of these, any of these lovely pictures to the side, anyone? Say yep. Yeah. Transmission was awesome, I've heard. Uh, never liked that frog. That frog was horrible. They polluted things with lots of ads and just totally ate up your bandwidth. Like, and that's not what you really go there for. So therefore, in this iteration, when the cat left the bag, he didn't really use the front of the bag. Once BitTorrent was released and it showed that you could do multi-peer in a way that uh, allowed individuals to share files at a very, very fast rate and, and utilize the maximum of their of their pipe, people can never go back. Uh, businesses have embraced BitTorrent in a way that they did not embrace previous technologies because it offloads that traffic on their network, which they're paying for bandwidth also, to other individuals. So you have massive distributions and ISOs and the like that actually utilize the torrent. Uh, the downside though is your business may not like the torrent because torrent is a demonized item. So therefore if you're pulling things, like I did once pulling Solaris, uh, and you will have your security team come and say, what the hell do you think you're doing? I'm like, um, my, my job? I need the ISO? But uh, they were not as understanding because the rules were very cut and dry that BitTorrent is evil. And it's not. The technology is not evil. You know, you utilize it for what you utilize it for. So, of course, the press embraced BitTorrent, <coughs> but they really didn't. They demonized it. They helped to demonize it. But in doing so, they also promoted it. And in promoting it, it made people interested in BitTorrent that were never, had never even heard of it. Uh, and it's funny because as they were demonizing it and making money off of, you know, people visiting their news sites or reading their articles uh, and then utilizing commercials, uh, they were actually making money off the thing that they said that, you know, you shouldn't use and they don't like. Of course, the individuals that developed it, they took it in stride. They went with the detractors will persist or, 
you know, and continue with negative propaganda campaigns or basically haters going to hate. They are not changing. And I can't wait to see what comes next after BitTorrent. So, how do we get our stuff? We're the bad guy. We're looking at the, at the uh, web in a way that a bad guy would look at it. We know there's a lot of stuff out there we want to get our hands on, theoretically. Uh, and knowing that just below our fingertips, you know, it's a combination of almost, we are now at two decades of file sharing. Hard to believe. So, we ask ourselves one simple question. And which the answer is always, loot. How do we do it? Well, we have to identify our target areas, conduct decisive reconnaissance, no access, bullshit. All we have to do is just, we, we loot. Like, I'm lying. You, it's really not that complicated. It's literally three commands that allow you to take things. So, we're exercising that a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing, and that little bit of knowledge is the utilization of the file type command. Oh, okay. Sorry. Give me a switch to the We're going to utilize the file type command in order to look for uh, specific file extensions. Uh, and we're going to use the nurl command uh, and the entitle command when we're looking at websites in order to uh, tell the site we only want to know how many, if it's a house, we want to know how many screws are in the house, how many studs are in the house, how much cement is in the house. When we look at the website, we're going to break down the actual components. And in doing so, we will find that some people have utilized their web space for storing things that they didn't actually buy. I don't know why that's not a clue, but that's funny. Um, so, the tool that we actually need is just one. It's just a browser. It's a specific browser because, also, another talk that I've done, which is how we've ruined browsers in our lifetime, and this, this specific browser is like most of them now, it's a mini OS. You can do so many things in it that you should not be able to do because that's, it's supposed to just get you to the web and do, you know, present that to you. Uh, but most browsers don't do that. So we need to pick one. These are our choices. Uh, I get, when I gave this talk before, someone saw the O and was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and then I really felt old. So we have to pick a browser. We're going to pick one, my favorite, Firefox. Because as a mini OS, it's awesome. I can run mail server in there. I can run web server in there. It it rocks. And I can also slice up my multimedia within the browser with extensions, removing audio and or video, depending on what I'm pulling. So, as I said, I can't go into, uh, I, I cannot, I would just run a complete rant about Firefox and how it is set up. Because if you have it, how many people have Firefox in their in their business or their home? Uh, I'm going to say that you really should monitor that that browser because that browser is so modular and the individual that uses it is literally the administrator in the browser. He can pretty much load anything he wants in it. Uh, but Firefox never intended to be that business-style browser. And just don't take my word for it. That was their statement. Like, they don't release things on Patch Tuesday. They don't release uh, fixes in a timely fashion like that. Or, no, sorry, in a more timely fashion than a business is ready to keep up with. If they find a problem, they usually try to resolve it and release it. So you can have, how many people have seen the three, four updates in a week? It's like, that doesn't really work for business. So they didn't intend to be that, but people do use them there and, and at their home. I recommend utilizing VPN. There are some free VPNs that are available, again, as an add-on. Uh, but when they crash and then you're exposed, things, things can happen to you of a negative nature. That could be a problem for you. Uh, but utilizing VPN is great because it does allow you to conduct your research without being uh, without your uh, ISP turning you off twice. Um, these, these things happen. <laughs> if you're utilizing the file type command, in this case, I'm now looking across the World Wide Web for just PDFs. And at this point, there were a little over, what is that, 2 billion PDFs? Uh, and that was in a 5.7 second search. Uh, I am 
I was flabbergasted by the amount of information that people do put out there because people have their wills out there uh, on sites that they think are safe uh, and lovely documents and and sometimes you know when you're utilizing the file tech command uh, for PDF PDF if you put in a publishing house you get some really interesting results so now I'm looking for a uh, uh, .cbz's and .cbr's for people that like comics, online comics, uh, and I am finding that uh, there are sites that do have full comics, full comic archives, uh, entire categorizations of different comics on them. Uh, in some cases, these sites have nothing to do with comics. It's just the fact that someone has a, a website, they have a large amount of space, and they've decided to take something they've gotten off of a torrent network and or off of old school Nutella and put it up there so that they can get access to it, thinking that they are the only ones that can get access to it. My man, I ran. Uh, I came across a guy uh, at, whose IP address is an, is an Iranian IP address, and um, he is selling USTV in a place where threat of death for having US, USTV is. He has it. He has an amazing catalog. It is ridiculously organized. He has shows that go way, way back, and it's hilarious to me. But he seems to also have modern stuff that comes in, and then he sets it up so that you, whoever he is selling it to, can get access to it. But it just blew my mind. Like, he, he just has literally every season of everything that has ever been in the last 30 years. So, uh, good luck to him, because, you know, he gets caught. They're not really lenient. Uh, different films. This is actually from an, another site uh, where individuals had movies. And if you'll notice the... Um, it has it. Uh, you can also do searches on, on Ganul because it's not uh, the country which this site resides in. Uh, not English speaking. So you can actually do your your search utilizing that with the... With the uh, in your L command and the in title command. Uh, and keep in mind that when you're utilizing the in, title, the in title command, you're utilizing it with the index of Google, so you're never actually touching the target. You are looking at what Google believes the website to be from its snapshot in time or from its current position. And it allows you to know what the content is without ever actually touching that, that site. I'm going to get back to that. <laughs> These were uh, uh, multiple sites that I actually came across where uh, the site itself is associated with the first site. It is associated with music, but they have a lot of music. Like, they don't sell the music, they just play it. And if you look at some of the extensions, you can tell where they got it from. Uh, but this is, this is what the actual results look like once you're utilizing the uh, in title uh, and in URL command. Uh, the last one's kind of a cheat because it's a site called the Swiss Bay, and it's sort of a Pirate Bay-ish thing. Uh, but the items are already there. It's not like you're going out and get it, getting it from different places. It's just local to the actual site. How dare you ask that question? <laughs> uh, no, you don't go looking for that because literally that's everywhere. It's what makes networks faster. It's the reason why, you know, <laughs> like it's a business. They're, they're, they're a large customer. They are a, they are a decider. Uh, but so, no, didn't, didn't go looking for that. Didn't care. Uh, I'm more interested in other things. Uh, interestingly, no matter how you have organized your logs, no matter how deep they go, you will not find this because it's just standard web surfing. Sort of. And I say that because Google will question your humanity. It knows that you're not surfing the web as a normal person. And it will ask, are you a robot? And challenge you with these standard, you know, captures that it has. Sometimes it'll actually do it six times, depending on how long you've been looking, utilizing this technique. Um, because it just doesn't believe that you're a human. It's like you're surfing the web, and a way a human wouldn't surf the web. Uh, so they, they don't like that. And they will ask you, you know, to verify your humanity. And you can do it. It's a little bit time consuming. Uh, this slide I put in, because actually just last night on my crappy uh, network at my hotel, this thing came, came, was coming down at about a, a minute, minute and a half, and I just stopped it. It was like, oh, that's interesting, because even on this hotel network, where everybody else is, 
could still pull. This is where my talk would normally end, and my rant begins. Um, even if you totally remove these items, <laughs> where you couldn't, didn't have to dork or, or didn't need to, uh, but you still wanted to get media or multimedia, there is a repository that we all actually have in our environment, and we don't think of it as being untrusted because it's a darling repository. And does anybody, can anybody kind of guess at what that repository is? So, I want to say for the record, I at no point in my personal or professional career have ever worked for <laughs> YouTube or its parent company, Google. I'm making some observations based upon the things that I'm seeing on that repository that is our favorite and darling YouTube or dark YouTube. <laughs> YouTube is an amazing repository. It has a lot of information on it. Staggering amount. Literally, you can do everything from learn how to cook, learn how, learn how to get into this industry, because there are multiple classes, courses, and things that have been put up there. Some of them are courses that people have paid for, but they put up, and if the people that found out that they paid for it and put up there, would probably get in trouble. Uh, but YouTube is amazing. Like, people watch it more than anything on Earth, which is insane. That's kind of an eye chart, but don't worry about it. Uh, here's a channel that has 23,000 audiobooks in it. Uh, most of them are in the public domain, and they state that these are supposed to be all in public domain, but if you kind of look through it, you find things that are not public domain. Uh, and utilizing the right plugins and or add-ons in the browser you have for the, uh, for your previous gatherings, um, you find that you can pull those books right out of YouTube. Uh, the funny part is, those extensions do exist in Firefox, in Chrome, not so much. You know, it's funny how that works. Uh, this is a movie, Law Abiding Citizen, if you've ever seen it. It starts off pretty brutal. Really, really brutal. And yet, at no point does a disclaimer come up telling you that that's the case. Unlike with television, where they have the parental stretching is advised, and you're always disappointed because it really doesn't need to be. Uh, this is different. This has things in it that you probably don't want your kids stumbling across or just arbitrary individuals getting their hands on. And yet it's there. Uh, this movie, as you can see, was first published in 2016, and it was just taken down last year. Uh, the funny part is, it's back up in several other iterations and also several other languages. Uh, I have a German copy that I found, and I was like, oh, that sounds completely different. and actually not as frightening. And I don't know why. <laughs> but this movie is horrible. It's it's just bad. I mean, it's a good movie, but it's just not something you want to you, you know. It's not something you want everybody to just get their hands on. Uh, the funniest part about this also is that if you see the version that that uh, costs absolutely nothing is has a lot of views and is rated higher than the version you actually have to pay for. And I'm like, can't Google see this? <laughs> But apparently not. Um, I started looking for just other movies utilizing, uh, does anybody know what Yiffy is? Yiffy is a notorious pirates who pretty much steal movies all the time. Why would Yiffy work in YouTube? Why do movies come up with Yiffy working in YouTube? Just, I, I can see it. I don't understand why their algorithm doesn't see it. Uh, I, I utilize the more standard uh, tech tactics techniques and tactics, uh, looking for Season 01, Episode 01, and Criminal Minds comes up, uh, Ancient Aliens, because aliens, <laughs> uh, multiple things, Farscape, which great show, if you want to see it, it's there, uh, it just totally blew my mind, it's like the things that you can actually use when you're doing the t using the technology that people don't like, work in YouTube, why is that? Like, the algorithm should be smart. The algorithm should be able to figure out when things are not needed. Ooh, that's... Ooh. Uh, ooh. I didn't back away from the mic a little bit. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, everybody can hear me, correct? Awesome. 
So uh, I put up my own disclaimers and warnings because YouTube also has seven of the ten banned films on it. Uh, if anyone ever heard of a Serbian film, it has no redeeming value. It's ridiculous. As a matter of fact, it's it's so horrible that unless you're logged in, you can't see it. So therefore, you're safe. Can't pull it. Oh, wait, there are third-party sites that allow you to pull things without actually being logged into YouTube. I wonder if that works. Oh, my God, it does. <laughs> As I said, that film is so bad, this is the cleanest scene I could show you from that film. <laughs> Faces of Death, anyone? Anyone remember it? Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, and the 30th anniversary edition, which, if you can look, has been up for four years. All on YouTube. Like, do you really feel safe now with your kids getting on YouTube? I don't feel safe with my coworkers getting on YouTube. <laughs> can I pull it? Yes. Am I using any tools? Did I load anything? No. Uh, oh, the movie Kids. When Kids came out, it was kind of disturbing because all the actors looked really young, even though they were all of age. Uh, that's one there also. Same thing. Not logged in. Can't pull it. So I logged in to see, oh, well, can I actually see it? Yeah, I can. And then, of course, you could pull it. So as I was saying, with uh, Firefox, the different add-ons, allow you to manipulate uh, the media that you're pulling, uh, you can actually process all of that media in Firefox. Uh, because there's a guy, it's actually very funny, he has also taken American movies, but he stripped the audio out of it, and he is every character in the movie. <laughs> so whether it's male, female, it, it, it's like, that's his, and that's his voice? It's like he's talking to himself because he doesn't have the translator you know, so he's like, I will translate it. And he plays every character. And it's just hilarious to hear a movie where it's just one guy. For everybody, he's arguing with himself. I was like, wow, that's great. It's kind of ballsy. Uh, to get the material off, uh, off of the site that you're visiting, like I said, there's still add-ons. There are a myriad of them. Uh, 1,870 matching results for pulling video. Like so, yay! Love YouTube. YouTube's awesome. Oh, these were for media converters in the browser. You know, less, but still quite a bit, 133. Okay, so, how this can negatively affect your home, your network, your legal team, who will t come to you if you're in your, uh, in your place of work, in, is that, uh, They'll tell you to keep calm because HR is here and everybody's always calm when you're when your human resources are there, right? <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> it's like your legal team's gonna talk to you, especially if you're doing this at work. And when you go on your engagements, if you come across a massive repository and and other uh, mm -hmm. factors such as finding browsers on the environment are there that, that kind of tell you, hey, uh, it was possible for your guy to have taken that. Could be a problem, right? Like for you it, oh, as a business owner. And you now have material in your environment that you were unaware of. When you're doing your, when you, pen testers in the room, I'm assuming? Someone? Anyone? Am I the only one? Ah. How often do you go looking for uh, media repositories in an environment? It, it's not normally a thing that you would think of. But, yes, you can actually suffer, or the corporation that you are uh, reviewing, or customer, can suffer because of legal action against them for people pulling information down. Uh, we actually did work on a case where we proved that a person had not been working for a long time because that person was, well, they weren't actually storing it, but they were watching porn for hours and hours and weeks and weeks. Uh, and when she was escorted out of the building, <laughs> because she had other people doing her work and it was, they were wondering why is she not working any cases. Uh, it was because, yeah, just kind of eating up a lot of time watching something she shouldn't watch. <laughs> Which brings us to the keep calm and by the way, you're fired. <laughs> 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 yeah.
If you're pulling information at home, that's one thing. If you're pulling in your business, you're putting that business at risk because DCMA is real and people pursue it. And usually, people that are doing this type of thing, especially if they're ballsy enough to do it in, in your business, they're probably not doing it in a way that would protect that business because they're clearly not trying to protect their job. Oh, I really got through this a little faster than I thought I would. Um, I want to thank a few people. Uh, my lovely wife for uh, putting up with my craziness, madness. Oh, no, I know why I did this, because I have some examples. Ah, like, what? Um, uh, the YouTube portion is based off of a talk I did at SmooCon Epilogue. If you go to Smoo, anybody go to Smoo? SmooCon? Great conference. Go there if you have, if you can. Uh, and the Exploit DB and Johnny Long, who, who without putting out this information, I would not be able to do this research. Uh, if you have not picked up the Google Hacking series of books, I highly recommend it. You will Google in a way that you have never Googled before. <laughs> and it blows your mind. The best part is you can scrub the environment for you. You can go looking for you. You can look for stuff for yourself or people that you know. Uh, and if you have not done that, I do recommend that. You'll be surprised at where your information has landed uh, on sites that you didn't really authorize your info to be there. And you may take some action against them. I get to my answers because all I do have is more questions. But uh, at this point, I will take some questions, and then I'm going to do something odd because I have a browser up, and I do have uh, some of uh, the, the search query results. Uh, are there any questions at this point? Yes, sir. I have not tried that, but I would think no, because that query block is only looking for the results in the repository itself. It's easier to actually utilize, sorry, but the uh, torrenty commands in YouTube uh, if you're looking for seasons. And people will obfuscate uh, the standard commands or standard queries. So instead of doing uh, S01, uh, E01 for season one, episode one, sometimes you have to do S1E1 or, or 1X1 and then the title of the item that you're looking for, and it will pop up. It really just, again, just blows your mind because it's like, well, this is not a difficult thing. Um, but no, I have, I have not tried it. I would think that it would not work because it's only looking for what's in the repository. Whereas with Google, you're looking across the spectrum. Anyone else? No one? Yes, sir. For generic streaming video capture? Um, well, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, the question was, do I have any recommendations for capturing streaming videos? Uh, do you mean from just from YouTube as, itself? No, from other sites. From other sites? Yes, I do. And that actually reminds me. I left one thing out. Uh, one of the other things about YouTube is that channels get taken down. You know, they find something, they do take that channel down. The perpetrators actually put the channels right back up. They literally don't even change their name. They just change the channel name. Uh, and they utilize a really, really sophisticated uh, means of command and control. It's called Reddit. <laughs> so if the channel goes down, they go on Reddit or a subreddit, and they say, yeah, sorry about the interruption. You know, this is, uh, this is the new channel. Haven't changed the name or anything. And if you were so inclined may want to write this down. Um, you uh, you can you can Google <laughs> uh, movies on anything Reddit, and you will find that there is uh, a subreddit that tells you where movies are on Vimeo and other uh, repositories. If you're able to stream the item through that browser, which you are, you should still be able to put plugins and or add-ons that should enable you to do a capture of those items going through the browser. Uh, not just on YouTube, if that answers your question. So yes, if you're getting a stream, you should be able to, as long as the stream is finite, it's not, you know, it's not something that's live. Live is kind of difficult uh, because it needs an end, and that doesn't normally have one. Uh, so yes, you should be able to utilize Firefox uh, and find a plugin that will allow you to pull 
uh, a stream as long as it's a stream that has an end, an end to it. Anyone else? Yes, sir. No, I do not, because the commands do not work so well there. I did actually try other foreign uh, search engines and uh, and uh, uh, browsers, and no, Google is right now the best resource to use if you are looking to mm -hmm. find media or multimedia. But uh, if you find something, uh, also if anyone finds something, you know, hit me up on Twitter because I'm always interested. It's funny the things that people find because their mindset is not my mindset, and I'm always interested to see you know, what people are able to get their hands on and or identify. Uh, one other funny thing is a group that I belong to, because I've been playing with this for, I don't know, four and a half, I guess almost five years now. Uh, I had a guy talk to me in a security group that I belong to, and he told me, he said, dude, that's my, that's my side job. And I'm like, no, no, this is a toy. This is, this is just playing. And he, he was serious. He said that was his side job. He does three to four hours a night. And, and I just had more questions, and as I'm typing, he goes, I make six figures doing that. <laughs> and I was stunned again, more questions, and he hits me up. He's like, dude, I make a buck sixty, three to four hours a night, looking for other people's digital property. He goes, it's called digital asset management and recovery. And I went, that's not a thing. <laughs> but it is. <laughs> you know? Legal teams and people actually pay individuals to go look for their digital property. No, I have a job. <laughs> uh, and again, this is just for fun. If it stops being, if it starts being a job, it kind of stops being fun. You know, and I'm not taking stuff. I'm just pointing out the Google, why didn't you find this? Why did you find that? You know, when it's on YouTube and in other places, I'm just pointing out to friends because it's just funny. Uh, but no, apparently they will, they actually hire people to, to do that. They, they retrieve or identify your digital asset and then they will send it legal action against them, which is crazy. You know, the toy has been monetized. Uh, thank you, now go play, but don't go. Because. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. As I said, some of the reasons why YouTube is not able to actually uh, locate things is because things like this. That movie, mm -hmm. that two, that two uh, hour, 11 minute movie, the, the Fate of Marine, is Game of Thrones, stitched together episodes to look like a movie. <laughs> and it's crazy. It was like, wow, I, I found this, <laughs> utilizing my Google dorking. Um, why can your algorithm not find this? Don't get it. Uh, here is a, a red chat, a Reddit channel, or a subreddit, that has some old cartoons in it. Rocky and Bullwinkle. Old TV shows, like if you like Twilight Zone and like the old scary stuff, oh, there's a subreddit for you. Uh, 21 Jump Street, you know, the TV show. Just lots of stuff. Here's an actual site, X Drive, where people have their have uh, the ability to store things there. And also, even if you're utilizing Google Drives, I'm going to give you a bonus command. Utilizing the site command, <laughs> you know, I'm a bad guy. I don't tell the truth all the time. Uh, utilizing the site command, you can actually do a site against uh, the drive.google.com and just look for items that people have in their Google Drives. People leave their Google Drives open. And information just flows out of there. I don't think they understand that leaving it open leaves it so that people can, you know, pull stuff off of you and or in some cases put stuff to your drive. Uh, because I've also noticed that people have utilized people's Google Drives for like advertising. You know, it's an ad with a link and it goes right there. Why? Because the face, the space is free to them. <laughs> Which is crazy, but funny. Uh, I have seen uh, information regarding personal information to people. And I also came across one interesting thing, which was a white supremacist barbecue where they put their pictures up. <laughs> and that was weird to me. <laughs> Simply because nowadays, high-end companies have entire HR teams dedicated to looking for you whole person concept. They're really not going to like seeing you at an event like that, I would think. Uh, yes, sir. 
How did I find which link? I found it by Google Dorking. The site itself came up. I think I'm online. Doo -doo -doo. I will show you. <laughs> it's an expensive library on this site, so I, I was looking at this last night like, wow, that is... It's not, a, it's not what you would consider a World Wide Web address. It is, in fact, the results of that search. Looking for Yiffy. Looking for Yiffy. Uh, the index, touching the index, not touching the target, because that was all index. You never touch the target unless you pull something, and that is where you've crossed the line. So some things don't come up with a, a dub, 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 as you can see. They come up with just an IP address. And you can look that up to see who owns it, by the way, because there's an IP address. Uh, but I guess they just don't care. But that would be a stand, that would just be a regular search. Uh, you can also exchange that HTM for literally anything. You can search FTP sites. You can search anything that has storage because Google knows and then so will you. But that's, that's how that happened. Uh, just standard search. You get your results. I have 16,500 results and as you go through them, you find that uh, some of them are repeats of just different sections of that uh, of that repository, but most of them are new repositories with new information. Say again? <laughs> Can I zoom in? This is not a MacBook guy. <laughs> Uh, as I said, you can look people up. This one is in Iran. There's a lot of people in Iran selling uh, <laughs> U.S. stuff, which is hilarious. Like, because you could die. Uh, this is a movie, Gotti, which came out in 96. Uh, and as I stated, the Fall of the Marine, which I took that uh, screenshot from. Oh, got to sign in. Oh, if only someone had pulled that down. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I have to say. I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, now go out and be bad guys.